So, uh, hello everyone. Um, thank you for Nils for the presentation. I am Philip, uh, usually known as FaultyX. I should disable the Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about the past, present, and future of Jack. Uh, actually, it's going to be quite a technical talk. So, any questions? Just raise your hand, and then um, I'll have Nils or someone else with the microphone, or I just repeat the question for the um, for the audience. So, let's begin. Um, some initial disclaimers that I'm going to be very harsh. It's it has to be like this, uh, and I don't like to soften things. Anyway, I, I better to be direct, to the point and truth. Uh, as I said, some technicals are some points are quite technical, so just raise your hand if you don't understand. Uh, and also, most of the history about Jack is not something that I experienced myself. Um, I had to ask quite a few people about this and that. I only came to the Linux audio somewhat recently, and to the Jack development as well. So it's a history not told by myself, but what I gather as information from others. Uh, first, I should explain exactly what is Jack for people that don't know, or maybe watching the stream for the first time and don't exactly know what's going on. Um, Jack is basically an audio server. I made this little thing so you can kind of see what's going on. You, where you have applications that don't talk directly to the hardware, but they have a little thing in between that helps them take care of the, all the hard, hard, the hard parts. Uh, so you just say that you want some audio, you want some MIDI, and Jack provides all the nasty things behind the scenes. The nice things is that usually you have applications, everything is separate, as is in this design, but with Jack, it allows com applications to talk with each other. Most of you are probably already know about this. Um, as the author said, from like Paul Davis, I have a quote saying that the Jack is the best and the simplest audio API available everywhere. Uh, it has support for metadata now, that so you can put tags and you can put information all around the system. It's not that used at the moment, but it's there in case we need it. The bigger thing is that it supports interconnectivity. So if you make an application that produces some sound, some effects, you can then connect this to another application in the middle. This is something that you might see a lot in like Imagine each of one of these blocks as a Jack application, as a Jack client, except for the system. This is just the hardware. So you might have a DAW, in this case Renoise, that is sending output to something else, which is recording or I don't know what else. You can have um, audio from your desktop things like browser feeding into like some effects or whatever, and then going, going to the system output. This is something that Jack allows. Together as well with shared transport, so all the applications are in sync. Uh, parallelization, so the, the audio runs on multiple cores if things are done properly. And the MIDI is that you receive the MIDI in the sample accurate way, the same way that the plugins do nowadays. But anyway, let's begin with the history. Hopefully that is clear, although if you don't know Jack, it's a bit complicated. It's a complicated project. But uh, let's start with the, with the history. Uh, it started around 2001, and back then this is kind of the situation regarding audio uh, on Linux and on non-Linux. We initially have the Latspa plugin format, which is the simplest thing you can have for audio plugins doesn't provide much. You can see my last year talk uh, with more details about this. Also, in OSS, this is basically APIs, stuff that you can use as a developer to talk to the audio. These are the actual audio interfaces. Um, there's no wrapper in between, so you actually... It's quite hard and technical to try to develop for, this, for these APIs. Um, stuff that is not on Linux, uh, ASIO was beginning to be a thing back then. Uh, I remember when using Windows, it was quite a pain because 
you had you couldn't use Alzio as in the normal laptop or in the normal sound card. It required very specific um, drivers and things like this. Now things are a bit better on the Windows side because you have Alzio for all and other related projects. So any actual um, any dr any drivers or any codecs or any audio card basically has an audio, audio driver right now. The, it supported VSTs initially, like many years ago on Windows, where you have the custom GUIs, which uh, at the moment, in 2001, there was no way at all to do this in Linux. I mean, you had the applications, which talked to Alpha, but that's not plugins. The plugins were slots by which the don't provide GUI support. So during like LAC and also in between developers, they thought that we should fix it, do something about it. Yes. LAC is the Linux Audio Conference. It's like a year event, just like Sonoy, all about Linux and audio and developing and getting all the developer community together. This very, very technical event on purpose. Uh, so all the developers meet there and they share ideas on how they can improve things. So the requirements they have is basically to make custom GUIs because other systems have them and we don't have it on Linux. Like basic parameters work up to a point. You cannot load files. Uh, there's no tempo information that you get in, in, your, um, in your plugin or something like this. <laughs> then it, one of the requirements was to make it in the Unix way. This means that you do one thing and you do it nice and good and let each person or each developer, each project do one thing and do it well. Then you find a way to connect between them and this way we have several tools that by themselves that may be not very useful but when you connect everything together it becomes quite nice. And that was one of the key designs for make, making something to fix the situation. So <laughs> with this idea in mind, it became uh, Jack Begins. Um, Paul Davis is the original author. He uh, like was working on Ardor back then, so he took the Ardor code, which at the moment only did only did audio. So Ardor, like I mean Jack, in the very beginning also also only did audio. There was no MIDI support in there. Um, the API was growing when developers start using this and throwing some ideas of what it should do, what it should not do. It grew in a way that it didn't become overly complicated. At some point we added um, metadata, which I think is quite nice to have, even though most people don't know because it was not in Jack 2, but I'll explain a little bit about this later. In parallel, while Jack was being developed in LAC and the Linux audio community, basically, we began to have custom GUIs in the Linux plugins. This was p made possible by the, S the SSI format, although not everyone agreed with this. The SSI is basically just another specification like VST, LASP, and other things. Uh, we started to have Windows VSTs running on Linux. This was basically just using the Wine and some other fancy tricks in order to get them to work with Jack. So you have a, you load a Windows VST and make it a Jack client. Back then, back then it was one of the only ways to have custom GUIs and uh, quite a few plugins running on Linux. You just bring all the stuff from Windows. We also got VST working on Linux. Of unofficially, because it was never really supported by the company, by Stein Steinberg. We started having uh, session managers because we realized that even though you can have all these separate tools and interconnect them, that was quite nice, you need a way to save your session. So when you're working on something, you want to save it and then restore everything again. You will have to start every single application separately. Uh, which is quite a pain. And you have to ri have the right parameters, the right connections, everything. So people starting started doing session managers. There was also some quite painful thing about Linux Audio where 
each project and desktop decided to do its own audio API. So you know, not only had you have ALSA and OSS and Jack, there was many other things. I, there's more that I didn't even list. There's no point for this. But in the end, everyone went Pulse Audio. Like, yeah, we gave up. Pulse Audio wins, whatever. Um, on the Windows or not Linux side, um, VST 2.4 became a thing, which, well, it's what most uh, audio applications use now, that standard. And Rewire as well. Does, do people not, don't know what Rewire is, actually? Can you raise your hand if you don't know Rewire? Okay, quite a few people. <laughs> uh, Rewire is basically like a plugin format, but made for applications. Um, it doesn't support much at all. You just have an audio stream from one application to the other, and transport as well. And it, it does not flow. Uh, the transport does not go back. It's not shared. It's one application controls the other. At least that's what I think it is. Um, it's kind of like Jack, but very limited in that only two. You can only have one application connecting to another. Um, it is simple, which makes it also easy to use. Uh, so usually you have in your DAW like a rewire, uh, just a rewire wrapper, I'd say, and then you it lists whatever applications are rewire compatible. You load them, and then you have one application inside the other. This on only works on Windows and Mac. It does not work on Linux, because we al already have Jack in there. We don't need this. Uh, the thing is that Rewire, at least on Windows and Mac OS, I would say is kind of known. We cannot say the same about Jack. But anyway, while this was happening, shortly a little bit after, uh, Jack 2 started. Jack 2, Jack 2 actually started as um, Jack DMP, which means Jack D as multiprocessor. This started because developer interest start dropping in, in the original Jack implementation, in the original Jack project, because it was also kind of complete in a way that, yeah, with it works. That's fine. We don't need actually to do much for it now anymore. That was the thought. And also some people were upset that Jack used C. <laughs> it's like an l another language, but now it People actually prefer it. It's, it's, it's better to not discuss languages here anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, so some people wanted to take Jack and make it a little bit better. This means that you don't get a click every time you make a new connection, like the things we have here. When on the original Jack project, when you drag something to make a connection, like this is an audio port, it is an audio port, you you hear a little bit of a click when you make this connection, every single connection. So nah, we want to get rid of this. The parallelization is something something as well. So we have a, a very big project which many with many applications. It's in the original Jack project it was using just one single core, which uh, is not nice. So parallelization was the thing. The async mode as well, asynchronous mode. Um, most people are actually using it and they don't know about it. This basically means that you run the entire graph, the entire audio, one time. Uh, you actually you t you take the output of every single application here from the previous time that the audio was generated, and those things that actually are ready are the things that get used. The thing, like, it adds a little one one cycle, I would say, of latency on the entire audio, but usually it's quite minimal. The idea is that if there's a rogue application and it's getting the audio stack, like in this case, this one, imagine like Renoise is stopped working. On the async mode, it means that this is kind of just taking, taken out of the graph. This one cannot process as well because it depends on this one, but the, the entire audio keeps working anyway. Um, 
in the original Jack project, if one client misbehaves, it take, like it stops processing the entire audio because it cannot just continue. But the asynchronous mode means that we can have audio that keeps running, like this one is unaffected, this one is unaffected, just this one is a bad one, and well, you just wait until it recovers. Jack2 made this, I believe, mostly because it wanted to be cross-platform, so working on Windows was like a big thing, and applications on Windows sometimes misbehave. Um, so you, yeah, you, you do want to compensate it somehow, and this, this was one way of doing it. Um, they also added profiling and other actually extra stuff that most people don't know. You can see how precise the, the cycle is in the audio cycle runs, but most people don't actually use it. That, there was a lot of stuff that got added into Jack 2 that not widely used at all. Thing is, this is about being harsh. The Jack 2 code is quite ugly. We c I cannot say it in any other way. There was communication issues, um, and developer approach was not liked by the, the Linux audio community in general. Like um, the author of Jack 2, uh, Stefan, um, I believe is French, but the the English language is uh, was not the best, so communicating was a little bit problematic. Uh, and because not everyone agrees with the way Jack was going and the code was being made and the releases made as well, Jack 1 still continues. Um, so we end up with the two projects running in parallel. They had Jack 1 and Jack 2. I, I think that's terrible, to be honest, uh, like fighting the things instead of collaborating. But we had the issues of you have to pick one or the other. Even though they mostly work the same, not really. There are some features that Jack 1 has that Jack 2 doesn't, and vice versa. Uh, and then there's you have distributions that decide to package both. So it, it was a little bit complicated to know what you're running, and sometimes you have to switch because one application, one developer decides that they only care about Jack 2, they don't care about Jack 1, and then you have to switch your Jack versions and then a bit messy. There was for a long time that metadata was only done for Jack 1 uh, because Jack 2 was more interested in other things. The only th on the last release, uh, a few weeks ago, we actually got officially Jack 2 f metadata for Jack 2, um, which I thank actually Rui for the initial pull request. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And there was also some like losing interest on Jack 1, uh, which I can kind of understand that you made something that is at least project-wise, how it's set up, it is better. Jack 2, if you try to make any changes, it's quite, you get lost in all this code in there. Uh, there was also the case of someone submit submitting a patch to Jack 1, but the patch was so badly made that it cannot be merged. And then Paul Davis tried to like convert all the styling of Jack to be unified, then applying the patch and doing the unification that patch as well, and then merging it back into one. And then it didn't work anyway. And uh, in at some point you get kind of get I, I don't really care for this as a developer. You know, you get tired of all this bullshit. <laughs> at the same time. While these problems occur, you also have the war of session managers. There's not only Lash and Lavish, there's other things that exist, like running custom scripts and other applications. Then Jack Session try to do it as well, and the non-session no, non -session manager as well, uh, which is a pain to the users, actually, because one application supports one and another and another, and then they don't talk, everything does not talk the same way. It's very frustrating trying to make everything work together. You have the case of classic versus Deepas. Actually, this Deepas is not written like this, but anyway. Which means, uh, I should try to explain this in an easy way. You can start Jack in the command line, or you can use it as a Deepas service, and they're not compatible with each other. 
and some you, some users or some applications expect one or expect the other, and it doesn't they don't play very well together. It could be it could have been done a lot better, but that was not not the case anyway. You also have the case of people that gave up on having standalones and interconnecting things um, and prefer just go to the plugin way. Instead of using separate applications, just use a single single one and bring everything in, everything as plugins. The thing is that Latspo was too simple. The SSI, like a middle, it's on the middle of being simple and allowing things, but it's still does not allow time and other stuff that we need. VST was proprietary, but we got LV2 at some point and people were like, yes, finally we have a proper standard and we can actually do cool stuff. So some people started going on the plugin side and forgot standalones because you need a session manager and that was, as you see, even more than this, it was quite messy. So LV2 was beginning to be a thing. Um, Pulse Audio was getting a lot of attention in the way that it didn't, it's not so bad, it works generally. The biggest issue is that it blocks the sound card when it's running, at least initially. It, things got better with Jack 2 that tried to integrate it. Uh, if you use Jack Dbus, it integrates with other things that Pulse Audio uses, so it tells Pulse Audio to like stop and let me take over and Pulse Audio sometimes says yes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's other things uh, like um, the wine, wine project removed Jack support. So in general, as a desktop user, using Jack became really problematic because most things would not support Jack anymore. They only speak Pulse Audio. You do want to bridge Pulse Audio to Jack but that is only possible if you use Jack Dbus. The Jack one is more compli more tricky for this. Pipewire slowly became a thing as well, but I'll mention that in a separate case. On the other non-Linux side, there was an attempt to use the Jack on the iOS system. Um, I'll talk more about this if I have time a little bit later on, but it <laughs> it was a thing for two months. Uh, Soundflower became a thing as well. Uh, like there was people trying to do yes. There's a question. Uh, is the Jack on iOS? You mean like iPads? Yes. Okay, so not OS X, so Macs desktop. Not not on Mac, but in actual iPhone, iPhone oh. or tablet or something like this. Okay, thanks. We had this working for two months until Apple decided that they're not going to be able, they're not going to allow applications to talk to one another. And then I think w some weeks or some months after the Jack for iOS was released, it died because it couldn't work anymore, which is very sad. <laughs> Apple killed it, yes. Uh, actually, on the next, Ma like uh, on the upcoming macOS releases, might be the same thing actually, because uh, Apple is pushing more and more for applications that only come from the plug from the App Store. You cannot just run random binaries anymore, which is going to be a problem for Jack. But that's Mac. I don't know. Something to try to handle. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the my my thing is. My point is, he had some external projects. I can talk a little bit about Sunflower, which is something that only works on Mac, which is a virtual device uh, that you can, like, you, you open an application, instead of saying that you connect to the speakers, you say, I want to send this to f Sunflower. It appears as a virtual device. Then you have in another application saying that I want to receive audio from Sunflower. So you basically have one application sending audio to one virtual place and another application receiving it. Basically, kind of like Rewire or Jack does it, but in the in the sense that it's a um, hardware device. So you get compatibility with everything because it just has to do audio. Uh, it's just the application only sees it as a, um, as a hardware device, which is quite neat, but it doesn't support transport or other things like this because that's not possible. Um, so I even though Jack was not very popular on these operating systems. Like, 
in a few years ago, maybe even now, if you ask Mac or Windows users what Jack is, they're not, they don't have any idea. This yeah. So they, there are other projects that try to use concepts similar to Jack, but they're not Jack. They make it a lot easier and a lot simpler. Let's see, current state over Jack things. Uh, Jack 2 wins over Jack 1 because it has more features, even though Jack 1 still has one or two things that it does better. Uh, I am currently maintaining both, actually, if you didn't know. Uh, the Jack mailing list is gone. I'm very sorry about this. Um, if I can explain quickly, like Paul Davis was still owning the jackaudio.org domain, and because I was always lazy, I never bothered to change it. So re recently, I told him I'm st going to stop being lazy. I'm going to move the domain and move everything, so I don't have to keep asking about small things. I think a few days before the, uh, the thing was completed, we already did the request. Um, well, we forgot about the mailing list, to be honest. And the mailing list w was on this domain. And basically, now it's gone because we forgot about it. We didn't think of this. But we'll have a solution. We'll have it kind of back in some weeks, I hope. And painfully keeping at it, which I mean like, it's not easy to take care of Jack because there's so many issues inside. The way it was made very quickly, hacky way, kind of. <sighs> but yeah, at least keeping at it. But anyway, future plans. Um, Jack 1 and Jack 2 feature parity. W this means the stuff that is on Jack 1 that is not on Jack 2 yet, everything is coming over. Uh, there's only one thing left, that was the metadata that was done in this release a few weeks ago. Now we have only the internal clients, which is regarding MIDI bridges and al also bridges. So you can have multiple devices when you start Jack, basically. You start Jack in a special way, and then you have, I don't know, three audio devices and all your MIDI bridges all in one, in one go. Um, it's something that Jack does, and Jack Jack 1 does, Jack 2 not really, although it can do in other ways, but it's never not compatible. The idea is to have, if you have something that depends on Jack 1, if you switch to Jack 2, it's going to work flawlessly. So you kind of have Jack 1 as the compatibility thing, and then Jack 2 as the more advanced thing that does other stuff, but supports everything that Jack 1 does. So it's basically like a successor, finally, after all this time. Uh, Unite the API, this is just basically means that they share a lot of stuff, um, all the core parts that define how Jack should work, they should be th exactly the same. If at some point we do another Jack, then we can just reuse this core part and we'll be fine. Because the Jack 2 development was a bit strange, it, even though people from Jack 1 try to share things as much as possible, Jack 2 did not actually use it. Like, it just copies everything over uh, and just modifies what it needs. So it needs to unify, unite things. I, I think it's something good to do. Uh, in regard to session management, the things that manages your session, your files, whatever inside the Jack, um, the audio session, I'm going to deprecate everything else. Non-session manager is the winner. Congratulations to Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, honestly, it just makes sense. And the, like, the specification for the, this session manager is quite nice. It's very well defined. And the more people that merge into a single one, the better. Because then we don't have these little wars and things going on. So while the rest, the rest of stuff still keeps working, like Lash, if you really want to, or Lavish, or Jack Session. At least on the Jack side, the Jack Session is going to be marked as deprecated, so hopefully no new applications use it. I hope so. <laughs> uh, it also needs some fixes, obviously, in cleaning up the codes, boring stuff, basically, but it's what should be done on the short term, so that in the long term it becomes a little bit nicer to work with. Waff Waff, which means uh, the build system is a pain, WAF, uh, made in Python and other things. 
But we just have to change it to something else. Basically, this is like a developer thing. Long term, um, it needs to get some cross-platform attention. This is actually my fault because I don't use Windows or Mac at all. So I've just been ignoring this all the time. I know people want to use Jack, and it doesn't work correctly in there. I'm sorry, but other things come first. Uh, so in the long term, try I will try to bring it and wait, make it work nice in these platforms. CV and OSC types would be nice to have. We kind of have like a hack around using metadata. Like if you don't know, like Jack has audio and MIDI as a port type, things that you can connect applications. Um, CV is basically just audio with a di with a different tag, and OSC is basically like messages, kind of like MIDI. It's quite easy to do; just it has to be very well defined. Uh, and more importantly, try to not let it die the project. We d we should <laughs> keep it running. Put actual new stuff. Uh, I don't know if it's going to have new stuff besides the CV and OSC because it just tiny changes. But Anyway, some reflections of all on all of this. Uh, there were many fights, many struggles that I don't think it was really needed, to be honest. But I guess it always happens. But mm. uh, it, it's just things slow down and like it's not always the best when you have developers fighting, not agreeing with in, in ideas, in vision. Then the project is just. Uh, Kind of you lose interest in your own project when things like this happens. Jack has terrible, terrible marketing. That's why I say like the Windows and Mac OS users don't know about Jack, don't know that it exists, basically. Um, even though Jack is a great piece of software because it can do really amazing stuff, like one application connecting to another, like in Windows and Mac, you usually don't get this at all. Um, it's the, like great software, but also, the user experience, that was th probably the biggest pain why it didn't grow so much. Uh, the user experience is very terrible. Um, like, it's quite advanced software, so if people don't understand it, I, I mean, it's getting very difficult to use. And the tools then have not always been the best <laughs> to set up Jack, like the session manager as well, something that needed. Yeah. You, I think you get the idea. Like the issue with Pulse Audio as well, trying to figure out all these things has been a pain over the years. Because I, I guess I still have some time. I just want to mention. Mm, mm? Okay, fine. Yes. Uh, let's see. This is Jack iOS. Something that I. Let's show the picture. Ah, right. I disconnected from the internet. <laughs> Just a second. The Jack iOS project started when a company wanted to use uh, Jack inside like an iPhone um, because the idea actually fits very well. Imagine like each one of these things is a Jack client, which is its own application. Um, you have then the Unix idea, the idea that you do one thing and you do it well. So imagine you have you do a MIDI piano for your phone, for your tablet. Then someone else does like a synthesizer. Someone else does a, an effects processing thing. And it just connects one thing to the other. And I think for something like a phone, it makes quite a lot of sense. So this idea initially was, was quite neat. They actually mm, did an, some additions to the Jack API as well, like the icons, li like this one, for example. This initially was the Jack custom data API, which um, Paul Davis did not like at all, to be honest. That's fine. Uh, I like to think that because I took this and made a patch out of it that I was going to apply directly in Jack 2, and Paul Davis was scared that this would happen. They would have this as an official API, so he actually quickly did the metadata API in Jack 1, said, no, this is how metadata is going to be done. No custom data, no very limited things. No icons, just complete metadata. And I, I don't know. I like to think that because of this, we got metadata as an official API. <laughs> so 
Shit. Yes. No. The thing that happens is that they, they even explain it, but you can read it about it later. <sighs> Actually, iOS 7. I think that's quite old by now. Um, Apple al allowed, maybe didn't even thought about it, that applications talk to each other. This is called IPC. So you have one application that shares resources in the RAM and another application that knows the protocol and can read and talk between each other. And starting with iOS 7, this was like, it's not allowed anymore for security reasons or whatever, but not everyone actually believes this. The thing is that, um, well, when Jack stopped working, there were still some applications in the App Store that still managed to do similar things because they had like some connections with Apple and their private stuff, private APIs. Uh, but nowadays, you cannot have anything like this uh, for iOS. I, I think they are kind of a similar way. Maybe that's why they want to force us there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I guess so. Like they made their own spec, their own standards, and because they want to be in control, they stay. They say no, no, no. We do our own thing. You do it like this, and that's it. Yeah, that's basically how Apple likes to do things. But anyway, this is. Uh, I cannot press this button. This is Jack iOS, which I think would be quite nice. Maybe at some point we have something similar for Android, even though Google tried, but because audio on, on Android is qu quite terrible, really. <laughs> it doesn't really make a lot of sense to try to do this, at least not now and there. But I'm this is just to show that Jack can do a lot of s good stuff. Like This provides a very good user experience. Like The setup is minimal. The, all the software is there, just basically Jack. But for the user, because the user experience is so nice, they can start using it, and I think they'll be happy with this, if it works anyway. But, okay. Where was I? Okay, some thing about the long future, because probably people are going to ask about Jack 3. The answer is no, not really. But if would happen at some point, this would be some of the requirements for such a project. Um, first would be a, s a pure C code base, no more C++. We had that experience with Jack 2. No, we're not saying no to this. <laughs> it's quite technical because it, I mean, you can do everything in C. This is a very developer-centric thing, but yes, one of the requirements. And it needs to have like multi-core and click-free and all these things that Jack 1 initially did not have. I should mention that there was a project that tried to do this, actually, like taking Jack 1 and making it click-free and other things. But the author, um, like, there was some deep issues with the software. They couldn't figure out exactly what was going on, why it was not working right. And then the author got busy with other stuff, with other projects, and the thing just ended up abandoned. Check, yes, that's the name of the thing. T just check. But yeah, now we have just Jack 1 and Jack 2 being the important stuff. Uh, the other requirement would be to have a proper debug control if you have the pain of like using the class Jack D and Jack D bus, there was an idea. There is one thing called libject server, which basically means that when Jack is running, you can still talk to it, and you don't have to have an entire Jack D bus uh, in order to just change things in the current Jack, which was not what was done actually. We got. Jack Dbus and Jack D, which do the same thing, kinda, but in the like, they st they are started and managed in different ways, but they contain exactly the same thing, and they're not compatible with each other. We cannot have one running and the other as well. If, like in the future, we want to do it nice, we have only Jack D that actually runs like the audio, and they have a separate thing. Did I? Uh, no, I didn't do the thing. Um, so you have a, a separate Jack D bus that only talks to this library 
and then everything still works. It's quite. I can explain if someone really wants to get deep into this. But the idea is not make Jack D and Jack D as completely, well, non-compatible. The shared tempo map is quite a big thing, and also the transport, which is a bit problematic in Jack at the moment. Even though applications can share time, they are in sync with one another. If one of them does looping, like in the middle of the or audio, the um, you know it stops from one point and goes back to another. Uh, only one application can actually do it properly, which is the one that controls the transport. The other one actually does not know that this is happening. So imagine you have like a loop, two loop, two looper applications. There's going to be one that is always a little bit off by a few frames at the end of the loop because of uh, something that was done in Jack that was not thought out properly, maybe? I don't know, but it's a limitation currently of the Jack API. And the shared tempo map as well, because <laughs> there's always some fights with Rui about this. Uh, the shared tempo map is another thing, basically just to say that if an application changes time somewhere in their timeline, Maybe like it changes the bar beats uh, instead of being four four, it changes to three four at some point. Currently, there's no way for any application to know that this is going to happen, and this is also a limitation that if some new version of Jack gets made, it should be uh, it should take it in consideration. Another thing would be to open development. This is mostly relevant because there are like uh, other implementations of Jack out there but they are private, which only one person uses, or a few people. And this is not a good way to actually to do any development at all. It needs to be done by the community, tracking issues, all these things, not behind closed doors. But <laughs> to be really honest now, the actual Jack future, the main thing is not let it die, basically, because you have to realize it's not a very good project to take care of, not easy. Um, with like prioritizing also fixes over adding new stuff, not making the same mistake of adding more and more and more stuff and the software becomes more complex and not even documented at all. So even though you have fancy new things you can do, nobody uses them because it's not written anywhere how to use them, which is then a little bit pointless. We do need better tools. This is not related to the Jack project itself, but in general, in terms of community, in terms of everything. Like, we have the QJack CTL. I guess that works fine, but be for some people. <laughs> yeah, but it's still very quite technical. Um, I don't know. It's the user experience is still not the best because of like Pulse Audio and Jack and the getting some things, trying to connect some things with the uh, with uh, it's a mess. But anyway, something that might solve this that I would like to introduce a little bit is Pipewire. Which, how many people actually know about Pipewire? Can you raise your hand? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, most people don't know what at this point what Pipewire is. Uh, Pipewire is basically trying to do everything together. So instead of having Pulse and Alsa and Jack, you have everything into one, which I actually have, like, the Pipewire main developer is here. Can I get the microphone? If it's okay with you, I would like for him to say a few things <laughs> about the project. Yep. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so um, Pipewire has a little bit of history, but um, well, the main um, way that it came to be was for uh, sharing video on the desktop, and it's it comes from the I'm working for Red Hat for the desktop team, so it's very user centric and it grew into this thing that now also does audio um, because, well, Pulse Audio has its share of problems, so 
I was making something that does multimedia transport, so why not do audio? And then I came to look at how Jack does things, and then I built something that is kind of supports all of the use cases of Jack and Pulse. So, um, but I, I'm trying to come from it from a user experience kind of viewpoint. So I'm hoping that um, it will be a better Pulse Audio and a better Jack experience. But yeah. So currently, <coughs> um, um, it's still in development. Um, we have plans to do like a, a preview release in Fedora 32, which is next year, I think. Um, so it can run Pulse Audio apps and Jack apps together, and it supports quite a bit of Jack API. It has the same kind of performance as, as Jack, um, but it has like all the fancy stuff built in, like security, and, um, and it tries to fix the problems of the previous slides. So it's a crazy, a crazy project, and it's, it's a lot of work, and, but yeah. It's, a, it's an attempt, and um, yeah, I think it can work. So hopefully we can do it. So yeah, something to look forward to, I hope. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so actually, because I, I mean, I've been talking to him quite some time, I can show you what it does at the moment. This is something that you might know. This is the patch, like a patch bay, the one I did, that is in Katia and Carl and other applications. This is actually pipe wire, but Carla is talking over Jack, even though it's pipe wire actually doing things, but it doesn't know about it because it impl like pipe wire implements the Jack API, and this is how you like it presents itself for Jack applications. So if you have a nor like a random Jack application. Let's see what I can run here. What did I have before? I usually just go with Carla. So this is my, oh, is the one of the correct one? Just a second. I have to make sure this is running, yes. And this this was working before, but ov obviously. Ah, I know why this. I need this. And now I need to start this thing. Just to say, show you something quickly. Okay, so this is <laughs> my own host, Carla, and you have the same thing. Like this is the as it knows the Jack graph to be. And I'm loading uh, a Jack client, any random thing. Let's clear this one thing here. This is another Jack client that could be any application, like um, can even be Renoise, Ardor, or whatever. And all these things here are um, Jack applications. The thing I like the most if I still have it here in cache somewhere. VLC. I need to take out the volume. So now I have it mu muted because of copyright reasons, but you have VLC that is not talking to Jack, is actually talking to Pulse Audio. But Pulse Audio is being bridged to Pipewire. So actually what you get in the graph is a Pulse Audio application that appears as if it was a Jack client. And I connect, can interconnect this as I want, which I find quite nice. Um, the other thing is that all other devices are listed in here. You don't have the issue of having like, to manually write something in order to add a new device into the Jack graph. All of them appear in here, they're dyna dynamic. 
if I remove or add a new thing, just another block appears here as a as a little client, and I can connect to them. One question, actually. I have it here. Ah. Um, do you have to relink the application against the Pipewire library? No. Okay. The application just works as is. And another question in the back. Uh, does this piping from Pulse Audio to Jack cause any extra latency or problems like that, or is it? But I will have to let Wim to actually to answer this. Yeah, so the, for the Pulse Audio apps, it's um, it's a lot better. You get a lot lower latency uh, if you run it on top of Pipewire. Um, but basically, does most Jack apps say is they request a certain latency? So that's the size of the buffer that they fill, and that's the amount of data that they give. So you don't get lower latency than that. But um, for example, if an app, a Pulse Audio app, would ask for one millisecond, we can actually give it to him. With Pulse Audio, you you can you get a hundred percent CPU. Um, so it's uh, it's kind of similar in, uh, in in performance for normal buffer sizes. But once you go to low latency, it actually uh, is a lot better. Like for example, if you run um, Pulse Audio as a Jack. Uh, uh, client, what you usually see is if you put a very small buffer size on Jack, the Pulse Audio CPU goes through the roof because it gets woken up too often. So these things you don't have at all. So, well, thank you. And by the way, I just want to say a special thanks to Paul Davis, to Torben Horn, and to Stefan Lett. Yes, and there was a question, but. Because they they worked on the Jack project initially and they brought this this great software. Um, we have to maintain it now, uh, but the hard part is done anyway, so that's good. Yes, um, I have another question to Pywire. Uh, how about the real time capabilities? Is it that good as Jack is? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that that was actually something that we were not sure about. Uh, last year, and Robin was quite vocal about this and some other developers because Pipewire was not doing things the correct way. But after like some complaints, loud complaints, <laughs> they just did the things that we requested and I, I guess that's the turning point. The things are working quite well at the moment. Uh, what does the yeah. developer team look like at the moment? How many people are there? constantly contributing code? Is it just you or...? Well, it's mostly me, which is basically just reviewing pull requests and trying to do one thing or here. Uh, there's a few contributors, but no real development, like no real active development happening at the moment. For my own case, like when I have projects and I need something to do, I usually just go with something else, not Jack directly. Jack is something a little bit on the side that I fix because it needs to be fixed. Uh, not something that gets worked on for fun. Uh, that that point is long past. But uh, yes, so development team, I guess you can say me. I, I have David Runch in Berlin helping a lot with the build system. And we have some very nice people just like computing contributing a lot of patches, which I still have to, rever to re review and merge. Yeah. Another question there. Um, assuming uh, anyone's got any of that mythical stuff called free time, um, are you looking for any sort of assistance with, with Jack at all? I mean, can people um, look through I'm not saying necessarily look through the code, but actually run it and report issues and things like that. Is there, is there a formal way of doing that at all? Well, yeah, you have the GitHub project, how it's been done for quite some time. Like, It's not like some projects where you have no way to report unless you mail uh, or something like this. The public, like the project is public. You can see the issues, the pull request and everything, everything like this. You'd need a web browser, obviously. But yes, I think everyone kind of has one these days. <laughs> Another question. Um, is there any kind of uh, like financial 
backing behind uh, Jack, or is there like uh, companies that uh, are contributing like regularly, or do you see any potential there? I don't know of anything like this. There was the case, for example, that Samsung did some code regarding Android because they wanted to use on their phones, but they, they just did a pull request. It was okay, so got merged, fine. But there's no company behind the Jack project at the moment at all. Um, I was wondering about, uh, so you were talking about Jack being maybe f more focused on cross-platform and at the same time we're discussing now about Pipewire being maybe what will eventually come next. So mm. what about application that would be working on other platforms like Windows or Mac? Like how would that fit with Pipewire becoming the next, the replacement for Jack on the Linux platform? Very good question. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, the idea to, with the cross-platform is to make Jack work nicely on this, uh, I mean, on non-Linux platforms. The thing is, even with Pipewire, I'm very sure that there's still going to be people that still want to keep using Jack because they, they don't need Pulse Audio, they don't need also Bridges, they only need Jack, which is fair. And there's going to be f things that Pipewire may never do, like the freewheeling and other more edge cases that are relevant to Jack, but not so relevant for a desktop. Um, so <sighs> I got a little bit distracted. <laughs> and anyway, I, I hope this answers a little bit of the question. Uh, well, I'm really looking forward to uh, things like uh, Pipewire and more interoperability between the pro audio world and the, uh, also like f web browsers, YouTube, Skype, and su such, because that's important for uh, po podcasters in the podcasting community. They, uh, people who want to use Linux, uh, they get quite confused between Jack, Pulse Audio, what's on this. Um, and so it's, uh, I really, uh, I'm delighted to have some uh, perspective for the future. Uh, however, there's one thing that also keeps me attached to the past, and that's my beloved Firewire interface from like 2009, which I can use thanks to the Jack Firewire backend. Uh, and I happily got it to run with my new PC this year. I tried several Firewire cards. And I plan to use it for the next, let's say, 10 years. So what's the perspective to use Firewire audio interfaces uh, in um, Pipewire? Well, I can say that also the ALSO project now supports a few Firewire cards. So that might be a way to go. I'm not sure how good the support is. But in either case, for these specific edge cases, you have to use Jack directly. There's there's going to be always a few things that you cannot do with a bridge or with pipe wire. But you, you want to say something? Yes, it's a matter of writing the backend, then. and then uh, I don't have a firewire card, so then I can't write it. Well, I can write something and then let you test, and then and then. No. No. Yeah, there's nothing done for this at the moment. You just have to hope, hope it works in Alsa, then it should, will work in everywhere. That will be the best case. And last question. Sorry for, for like dragging it along. Uh, so uh, I've heard about Pipewire before. I was not able to understand what it is, and I didn't see it anywhere, just the website. But from what you say, it's like... I don't know if I imagine it correctly, but could it be like the one audio server that would understand all the APIs we we use, the Jack API, the Pulse Audio API, maybe other things, maybe other operating systems, stuff like Core Audio or whatever, and just unite all of that and make the user experience finally painless, hopefully, maybe? That, that'll be the idea, yeah. I mean, Core Audio is something only for Apple, whatever. I don't think Pipewire wants to run on these platforms at all. No, okay. Makes, I mean, it makes sense from Red Hat, they only care about Linux. But it, that's the intention. Make every, uh, the user experience, overall desktop experience, that's the, the point here, 
to be as smooth as possible. Final, final, final question. Um, going back to, to Jack, um, I didn't see you mention anything about Nets Jack in your presentation. Yes. What is the state of this beast? That's because I never use it at all. I even put it here just as a reminder. That's li like network. Like this is one of the things that I say about user experience in Jack. That is a very nice piece of software. There is this thing that is not very well documented. And there's not a lot of tools to actually provide this functionality. So most people don't even know it's there, even though it's quite nice. Like this means that you can have Jack running here on my computer and on other computers, and all the audio and all the transport is in sync. Everyone is in sync, which is quite nice. But because we lack user experience and other things, it's very difficult to set up. So like I, I don't use it myself. I kind of, in this way, gets ignored because I don't actually, for me, there is no use. I don't exactly know how to go about fixing things in there. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. I think we are um, out of time. Uh, yeah, thank you for the talk. Thank you.